Okay, welcome to part 9 of my tutorial series on modeling a clock in Maya. In this part, I'll be modeling the clock's hands. To begin with, I need to display our original image planes we imported back in part 1. I'll check the visibility on that layer. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to Create, Polygonal Primitives, Pipe. Some of the settings I want to change, I want to set the axis divisions to 40. And I want to set the axis to Z. And I will leave the radius, height, and thickness at the default. Then click Create. Now I'm going to use the Move tool to drag it in front of our clock face. Switch to the front view, wireframe view, and now we'll begin modeling the hands. To start off, I'm going to scale this outer ring, which will later become the hour hand, to about the width of the hour hand on the image plane. That seems pretty close. You may notice the image plane is slightly off-center. That's because when I took the photograph, I wasn't 100% centered with the clock itself when I took the picture. Nothing to be worried about, though. So that right now seems to be about the right size for our clock. Now let's look at how the hands are built. They revolve around pieces of plastic, which get progressively smaller so they can slide inside each other, allowing each of the clock hands to move at a separate speed. We'll be starting our model off with the hour hand, but before we do that, we will duplicate our other two hands from our base pipe. I uh, will go back to perspective view. And one other thing, these hands are supposed to be relatively thin, so we'll need to scale down our pipe along the z-axis to make it the required thickness. That should be pretty good. Now I will duplicate it by pressing Control D, or going to edit duplicate two times. So now, the next thing I'm going to do is scale them down progressively. So I will select the first one, and now the second one, and begin scaling. But, you'll notice as I scale, it also scales the thickness. I want all the hands to maintain the same thickness. So to restrict the scale tool from scaling along the z-axis, I'm going to control click on the z-axis and then begin scaling. This will lock that axis out of the scaling. Now I will scale the second one. Actually, I think I scaled those down too far. Look at the reference. I will also scale this one down. And that will do for now. So let's go back to our, our hand, switch to wireframe view, and begin modeling it. So to start off, I will go over to face mode, select some faces along the top that are about the same width as our, our hand displayed over here. That should be pretty close, maybe a bit bigger deselect the faces that are not along the top and then go to Edit Mesh Extrude grab the Move tool and move it to about the size as our hour hand now I'm going to go back to Object Mode and rotate it just to make sure they're about the same size as you can see it's a little bit short so I'm going to rotate it back grab the vortexes, pull it up a bit more, and rotate it again. Actually, I'm not going to rotate it back this time. I'm going to go to vortex move, to, I mean mode, use the move tool, and then open up the move, move tools tool settings by clicking this button here, and set it, the move axis to object, so I can scale, or excuse me, move the vortexes, along the axis. So they meet 
the edge of our original hour hand. Now, I'm going to select the hour hand in object mode, open up the attributes editor, and reset its rotation back to zero. Now, let's begin modeling the minute hand. So, I'll repeat the process, go to face mode, then I will select the faces that are about the approximate width of our minute hand. Want to get that one too. And then, excuse me, sorry, it's taking a bit much more work to select them. I think I'll deselect these. I'll go to Edit Mesh, Extrude. Look at the length of our minute hand, and once again, move it to about the equivalent length. Then we will rotate it. Go over to vortex mode. The move tool is already moving along the axis, so I can just fine tune the length. There we go. Select the object, back in Attributes Editor, set the rotation values back to zero. So now we're moving on to our second hand. The second hand tapers off on the long end, and it has a short, blunt, short end on the opposite side. So to model that end first, by the way, you can see its width peaking up on the left side excuse me, right side of our hour hand in the reference image, we'll begin modeling it first. Go to face mode, select the approximate width of faces. Remember, you want to make sure you select the same amount of faces on the left side of the origin as you do on the right side of the origin. This will keep everything in line. hard to really get exactly the width that you want. I think it needs to be wider. Then go to Edit Mesh Extrude. Grab the Move tool. Move it. And we will rotate again to check the width. It's pretty close, but the length once again is off. So I will compensate for that. Go back and reset the rotation back to zero. Now the next thing I'm going to do is model the second hand, long side of it. And to do that, I'm actually going to rotate our second hand all the way around 180 degrees. Now we're going to model the second hand's long side vertically just as we did the other hands. So, go back to face mode, select the appropriate width of faces, probably too many, it's really quite thin, that eh, might have been right. Then go to Edit Mesh Extrude, use the Move tool, and scale it to the same length as our minute hand, as it has the same length as our second hand. And, as I mentioned before, it tapers. So we will go to our Scale tool and scale it down. Let's take a look at our hands in perspective view. I'm just going to temporarily rotate them, just so we can see what they look like. And, as you can see, that's it for the basic hand geometry. I will undo that, save the scene, and begin modeling the rest of the hands pieces in the next tutorial.